But and I apologize to everybody who doesn't like hearing talk of Manchester United, but they again they leave again, us no choice. No choice. They're out. And we knew it was likely to happen, and it was beyond their control ultimately, um, because obviously uh, Copenhagen beat uh, Galatasaray. Uh, but we think we have to talk fallout. We have to talk the way this game happened. Um, there's this incredible stat that we talked about before: twelve defeats in twenty-four games yeah. this season for Eric Ten Hag. I said on Monday that what I want to see is progress more than performance. It, it was likely they were going out. It's likely they'll lose to Liverpool. Uh, they may lose to West Ham too. I know people say, oh, it's a results business. If you say it's a results business, you're kind of a moron because it's kind of those like easy, yes, obviously. But you want to see performance because that shows you that you're going to move towards results. Yeah. Did you see a performance? Did you see a reaction from them? Well, I saw Gav is that they had to win the game to stand a chance of qualifying. And I know it's Bayern, already qualified, already top of the group, but you have to win to, right. to stay alive in this group, to, to hope that there's a draw between Copenhagen and Galatasaray and that you're actually going to go through, right? One shot on target in 95 minutes or 96 minutes. I blame one, Varane. One shot on target. How do you expect to win the game when clearly, I understand, I understand in a way that Ten Hag wanted more solidity because if you start the game and you tune it down after 15 minutes, then it's, it's even more of a disaster. But you have to win the game. You, you cannot play just not to lose it because you actually have to win. How can you have one shot on target, a Luke Shaw shot from outside of the box, and that's it? Nothing and, else? And, and I think one other thing to add to this, which I think, puts it in context. Um, I was surprised. I mean, Tuchel said he would play his strongest team, and he did. Bayern Munich, of course, is short of first place. I think, obviously, he wanted to see some sort of reaction. They have another big game coming up at the weekend against Stuttgart. He yeah. wanted to see some redemption, maybe, after they were beaten 5-1 by Eintracht. I wouldn't have done it. I would have played the kids. I would have played people like Alfonso Davies or Yellow. It. But it's important to play. Yeah, so you're playing their best 11, right? I think, except for Shupo Moteng, who's replaced by uh, Jamal Musiala. <laughs> But equally, this 11 out there, yeah, they want to play, they want to execute, but they also don't want to get injured. Exactly. They, they also thinking ahead to Stuttgart, which is much more important to them. Exactly. So in some ways, it's almost like if he'd played a second 11, he would have been facing all these angry, super motivated Matthijs Tell and, and, and Kratzig and Pavlovich types. Instead, he plays these guys who yeah. are kind of like, eh. And I think that makes it more disappointing. Yeah, also. And... I mean, imagine if there had been a draw between Copenhagen and Galatasaray. I think United fans would have rather to lose against Bayern Munich at home, but at least give it a go. Not what we saw, I'm sorry, not what we saw on Tuesday. That was just not, that was just not good enough. And to have five shots in a game like that, only one on target. And yet they, they didn't give much to Bayern and Bayern scored that lovely goal by Coman, great assist by Kane. But apart from that, they had some chances, but you could see that United were structured defensively. That's not what was needed on that day. What they needed is a goal. It's, and there was no Martial, no Rashford. So again, we go back to injuries. You lose Sean Maguire. How, how did Martial get injured from one game to the next? No, he was ill. He was ill. And oh, he was, was ill. Ill. Yeah. Rashford was ill too. I now, so. I, obviously, when somebody in that situation, especially Rashford, gets ill, and, and I think this is comms matter, right? Because as far as I know, all we have is United telling us that Rashford's not selected because he's ill. I think it's important your messaging and quashing rumors. If he really is ill, I think you need to come across more convincing that Rashford is ill. Yeah, I don't know. I, again, I have no idea what he, you know, tell us what he has or whatever. No, because I, I, I have no reason to believe he's not ill. But I, given what happened before, you know, you need to think about these things. And... I, it's, there's a sense of drift, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that uh, it's not just Ten Hag and the results, it's also the uncertainty still of the, over the ownership yeah. situation, which has not been completed yet. It's been agreed, but it hasn't been rubber stamped. And I think that's the only point which you go forward. Although already, there's stories out there. There's stories that Julian Lopetegui is the top choice. There's uh, stories that Ratcliffe has met with, with Graham Potter. Yeah. Um, in one sentence, do either of those two excite you? No, I mean, I, like I said on the website, like we wrote on the website together, I would I would keep Ten Hag a little bit, but 
I think if Radcliffe is starting already to talk to other managers, doesn't smell good for him at all. Uh, no, it does not does not look good. And of course, maybe he just wants to know what his options are down the road. Who knows? Uh, we're going to break this down further, as you'd expect, on the Gavin Jules podcast. <laughs>